23 days into 2015, the debate on freedom of expression has come to the fore around the globe. From the tragic Paris attack and satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo to Zaldo Lagrange's heated Twitter argument with those who don't agree with her views here in South Africa, we ask what are the limits then of freedom of expression and in a time when all of us are encouraged to share our thoughts on dozens now of social media platforms, is there need for limits? Well, to help us with this discussion, we are joined today by a right to, to know spokesperson, Jay Shri Patha, who's with me in studio, and also Homozo Makapani, who's a partner of corporate law firm Bowman Gilfillian. Very good morning to you guys. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. I want to start with uh, right at the top. Is there such a thing as freedom of expression under a capitalist system in the world? Can it, is it possible? I think it, it's, a, it's a very important question, and I, I think that that's one of the dimensions that we have to address in South Africa, and I think that's why the issue of Zalda Lehanche has become such a controversial thing. The reality is we are a deeply divided society, given our history of colonization, um, our legacy of apartheid, but we are also one of the most unequal countries in the world. Yes. And a part of the debate that hasn't happened in terms of this is who is in Twitter's fear in the first place? So we talk about black Twitter and white Twitter, but what is the class dynamic? Who, ha who can yeah. afford to be on Twitter? Who can afford to have this freedom of expression? Absolutely. That's, yeah. the, that's the point. It comes down to the financial aspects. And also, you know, in America, they call it lobbying. What do you pay for and so forth? And what do you give up? Uh, sometimes, I, you know, I'm in the media and I feel that, uh, you know, we need to maybe open eyes a little bit. But what does, what does, the, what does the lawyer say today? Give us, give us your overall thoughts on this. I think it, it's important to recognize that freedom of speech is enshrined in our constitution together with other rights, yes. to, um, rights like human dignity, like privacy. And it is important, therefore, that we, we, when we speak of freedom of speech, we also take into account um, all the, these other rights. Of course, freedom of speech is important in so far as democracy is concerned, as she said, given the past that you have. But of importance is talking about the debate ought to be from where I'm sitting. Um, the balance between the different rights that we have. Yeah. I want to talk about, in light of Zelda's recent rant, the Twitter rant that caused such a stir here in South Africa, should influential people, or should they be sharing their comments in, in, in these open forums in the way that they do? I personally have removed myself a little bit from Twitter because I feel, you know, uh, it's, it's often misconstrued and... and and what I have to say can't really be put in 140 characters, but how do you view this? I think that's the lesson to be learned from this. Uh, there's a lot of excitement about being able to share our thoughts, our views, and we want to encourage that. But it does come with responsibility. It does have an impact. We need to understand the medium. Uh, Twitter, for example, Facebook, uh, means that the minute you get it out, it's instant, it's viral, it just spreads. And so I think a lot more forethought uh, at the beginning to think about what am I saying and what impact will it have? So part of that responsibility that comes with these yeah. rights that we have. Um, so I think that's, that's something that South Africans are gonna have to get up to speed much, much faster about. Uh, because we, we do, we, we're a very uh, opinionated society yes. as well. We love sharing our views, and we should. That's how to build a vibrant, robust democracy. But we have to think much more clearly about the impact of what it is that we're saying. Andy Horwell said in the future, we would all be, everyone will be famous for 15 minutes. Nakamoto, <laughs> tell us, you give workshops to all these people that make themselves famous on, on Twitter and other social media platforms. What are the do's and don'ts that you tell these people uh, around the legal aspects of social media? I think f first it is important to recognize that um, social media, um, it's not different from print media. Mm. And that w when you speak on social media or you tweet or you um, make a post on Facebook, that, that you, you may be held accountable for it. And I think the most important thing as well is understanding that once you put it out there, it is no longer within your control because even if you remove it, it may be retweeted or reposted. And therefore, it is very important for people to, to think before they post, um, think before they write, think before they tweet, but importantly, think before you like a post or, or when someone takes on a post, understand the implications. Just to give an example as well, um, if you work for the SABC, Yes. and you make a, a, a tweet um, or make a post on, a, on Facebook, that is somehow defamatory. The SABC may be implicated as well. 
and therefore there are employment um, as well employment implications there. But also there the, the are statutes in our country that um, protects against harassment. Um, and therefore you may be prosecuted. So all those things are important to take into account. But social media has taken off um, so fast that it has um, left the, the development of the law in, the, in its wake. Yes. But the good thing is the, the courts are empowered to develop the constitution um, in line with the common law. And I think that is our, our reprieve. So the frameworks are trying to catch up with, with the medium itself. I, I want to talk about uh, the, this idea that there's limits we talk about the constitutional rights of people, and then there's an idea that there should be limits to freedom uh, of expression and freedom of speech. How do you view that? I think it would be better for to get a legal, legal perspective on that. But just to say, I mean, I think it is, uh, it's, it's an enabling right. So we say that it's a right that enables others. But it, I think it is one of those rights that's just really one of the hardest to wrap our heads around. Uh, I'm a feminist, so am I going to be comfortable having some sexist person standing there? They're free to express their views. Yes. So to be able to ex accept my right to have my opinion and somebody's right, however distasteful, however uncomfortable it is, is, yeah. is a very difficult thing. But there are limitations. And you, you had a great little image earlier that said freedom of expression, conditions apply. And it's the debate about what are those conditions uh, that we need to be having as a society in South Africa. Well, guys, we've run out of time. This is the discussion I really would like to take a little bit deeper because we haven't even touched on Charlie Hebdo. You know, there's, there's the, the, the Twitter within the war scenarios as it play out. Uh, there's the other issues around freedom of speech, the financial aspects and so forth. Hopefully, we'll have this a lot more as we go throughout the year. But thank you very much for joining us today uh, around this emotive issue. The limits. Are there limits? Should there be limits to freedom of expression? I think there should always be limits to everything. Anything that has no limits can often land you into trouble and co often cause trouble for others, or even pain and suffering for others. And that's the should be a main con consideration. Now we're going to close.